Okay, good evening and welcome to the March 23rd, 2023 Planning Board meeting. This is a joint meeting between the Planning Board and the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission. Uh, tonight's, e uh, tonight's meeting will be held at 6 p.m. by remote participation methods. The meeting will be televised via Channel 18 and may be viewed via the Channel 18 website at streaming85.townofbarnstable.us slash cablecast public site. Real-time access to the meeting is available utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID provided below. And the link is townofbarnstable slash us dot zoom dot us slash j slash 865-060-46686. The phone number to call in is 888 888- 475-4499 and the meeting ID 685-0604-6686. Application materials may be accessed by contacting Karen Heron at karen.heron at town.barnstable.ma.us or calling 508-862-4064. And at this time, I will call the meeting to order. And I'm going to read the notice of recording first. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast from Channel 18 in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20. And I will now inquire when he, whether anyone else is taping this meeting. And if you are, please make your presence known. And seeing none, we will now introduce the planning board members, uh, starting with Bob. All right. Good evening, Bob Twist. Thank you, Bob. And Ray. Good evening. Ray Sexton here. Thank you, Ray. And my name is Steve Robichaud, Chair, and we may have some additional Planning Board members uh, joining. And at this time, I will turn it over to Cheryl Powell, Chair of the Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission. Thank you. So just uh, doing roll call for the highest Main Street and Waterfront Historic District Commission, otherwise known as the HHDC. I am Chair Cheryl Powell. Um, I would like to also uh, invite Laura to introduce herself, full member. Laura Cronin, yes. Thank you. Uh, is Mark, Mark, are you here yet? Not yet, he may come in later, he's very good. Uh, Jack, uh, you, I, I don't think Jack is joining us from tonight, but correct me if I'm wrong, Jack is stuck in California with the rains and damage. One minute. Oh, Jack, you are here, thank you so much. So, Jack, would you like to uh, be a full member and is also our vice chair? Thank you for joining us. Um, Tom, uh, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself, also a full member? Uh, Tom Doherty. Thank you. Uh, is our second newest member, Matt, with us tonight yet? He started at our last meeting. Okay. Uh, Matt, he's here. Matt, Matt's here. Matthew, thank you. You are here. Thank you very much. Also a full committee member. Uh, and we have one new member. It is her first meeting with the HHDC. As I mentioned uh, to people gathered earlier, it's kind of throwing her in at the, de uh, the deep end. Jen, would you like to introduce yourself at full member? Hi, my name is Jennifer Hinkley Needham. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. I'd like to also uh, acknowledge our town council liaison, town councilor Betty Lucky, thank you for joining us. That takes care of us. I'm going to put it back towards uh, towards planning. Excellent. Thank you guys so much uh, for for hosting this uh, coming uh, together in uh, in rather short notice, a month time to to get it all together. We have planning board and our historic commission together uh, for. Uh, what could be a very exciting project for downtown Hyannis. Uh, this is kind of uh, 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 building from uh, the momentum that has been achieved in downtown Hyannis with the new uh, zoning initiative that was recently approved by town council uh, for more form-based zoning in, in, our, in our center, our core of, of Main Street. Um, and from here, we look to build on that with uh with this proposal to uh, essentially create a unified design document um, our consultants are here tonight uh util consulting uh who will go more into detail but uh but really the 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 big picture is we have multiple 
jurisdictions here in, in our growth incentive zone in our downtown Hyannis uh, within our new zoning districts. Uh, and, and those are, are you two, uh, you uh, are both board and commission. And the planning board has our design and infrastructure plan that reviews uh, you know, certain design criteria and our historic commission obviously has their their uh, design uh, guidelines. Um, the intent here is to build upon um, our zoning uh, and to enhance our design and make them uh, spe uh, speak together. Uh, meaning, um, you know, as as projects come forward, we're all speaking in a unified voice and in a in a direction that uh, is not uh, counterintuitive. Uh, to the streamlined permitting and development or and criteria that we've put together. Uh, so this is meant to build upon what we've what we have all achieved uh, recently and um, and enhance you know some of the design criteria to ultimately give you guys, you as the commission and you as the board, uh, better projects that get to uh, once they get to your uh, desk, once they get to your meeting for review. Um, and so with that, tonight is really meant to be just a, a big, a broad overview of the project. Uh, and we thought it would be best to do that all sitting in one space and, and hearing it uh, together uh, so that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, the deliverable tonight is really to, to um, have two members of each, each of the board and commission volunteer to uh, help staff in a working group. Uh, that will uh, help develop this unified document, uh, uh, unified design criteria. Uh, so as the presentation is going on, if, if it piques your interest and, and you, you want to volunteer, uh, we'll, we'll certainly have that discussion at the, at the end of the meeting. So uh, the process for this evening will simply be uh, a presentation by our consulting group, um, and then we'll have some time at the end for question and answer. And then again, if uh, if anyone is interested in joining our working group, uh, we'll do it at that time. Uh, so with that, if I may, I'll hand it off to uh, Mr. Tim Love from UTL to give us a presentation. Great. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Tim Love. Um, I'm a principal at UTL. We're based in Boston. I, I, I know I met some of you through the zoning process. I was very involved with the conception of the the, the zoning proposal early on was involved with the many steps along the way. And it, it's very satisfying to come back and as Jim said, um, help you conceive of the complement to the zoning. Um, I was trained as an architect. My career keeps migrating more and more into public policy, but that's why this is a perfect project for us because it involves policy and architecture, of course, and landscape architecture. Um, with me tonight are two colleagues, uh, Andrea and Lauren. I'll have them introduce themselves. Andrea. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrea. Um, I'm the project manager for this project and excited to work with you all. Uh, Lauren. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren. I'm an architect and urban designer at UTL um, with a little bit of experience working on similar zoning design guideline efforts in other uh, towns in the region. Looking forward to working with you all as well. So I think with that, if I can share my screen, um, I'll just get right into the presentation. And, and maybe um, um, it, it's a short presentation, I promise. Um, it's meant to give you some sense of our perspective on this project. We haven't really got started much except to think about how to frame putting all these pieces together. And, and maybe along the way, if you have questions, um, I, I don't know, do all the panelists have access to the chat function, Jim? Or no, does that not work? No, I don't believe we do. We, we don't activate the chat here. Okay, so write down your questions or, or you can interrupt me, it's fine. I don't, <laughs> totally fine with me, um, wh whatever you prefer. So let me um, share my screen. I'm gonna be looking to the slides and not you. So it's not that I'm not paying attention. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Excellent. By the way, this is a pretty awesome postcard. Um, look at the diagonal parking along Main Street. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is the the first half of the 1930s from the cars, but we can speculate on that later, maybe a little bit later than that. Um, okay, so uh, I, 
what we want to cover tonight is uh, just an introduction about how we see um, uh, this project being structured, how we see the process uh, uh, going. And I think Jim's already covered at a high level um, some of that. We want to be very clear about um, your own jurisdictions. I'll call them the commission and the board for shorthand. I guess that's okay relative to the new zoning that's in place, uh, how it dovetails specifically in a map with the zoning. Um, and, and then how we've started to think about what should be in the guidelines. Uh, we're all for um, detailed and tight guidelines in this case, um, but we wanna also get a sense from everybody about um, how loose and discretionary or how tight you want the design guidelines to be. And there's of course evidence from the documents that already exist that both the board and um, the commission use to make those kinds of um, uh, decisions that, that tend to be mostly discretionary, but with guidance. And then we'll talk about next steps. Got to get to the right thing here. Um, so um, just want to get the sense of purpose on the table first. Um, one is that um, in a way we're lucky here because the zoning as approved already has a lot of design standards built into it that in other jurisdictions would need to be in design guidelines. And I, I'll, I'll show some examples in a minute, but uh, things that include, you know, the, the size and number of dormers, the, the requirements for roof pitch, um, maximum facade length. Um, and we see that the structure of the guidelines for the developer or the architect coming into town and coming into the into this area to do a project would be able to work back and forth between the zoning and the guidelines so they add up to a clear picture about what the requirements would be and so because we were the co-authors of the zoning um, we're going to keep a careful eye on that um, we also as as jim outlined um, uh, think it would be fantastic if the commission and the board could use the same design guidelines as a basis for your discussions. Um, and um, part of our work um, with all of you, but especially those four volunteers, is to make sure the interests of the board and the interests of the commission are represented in the guidelines. Because um, uh, while you both the board and the commission want good contextual, well-designed projects within the, the jurisdiction of these guidelines, we know you have different points of view and different interests. So we wanna respect um, all of that within uh, the body of this document. Um, and again, we want to, for um, homeowners, developers and architects um, to make the expectations um, super clear so um, when projects come to you, they're already, let's say, pretty good, uh, you know? Um, and, and I think the better job we do with the guidelines, the zoning will already help do that. Um, uh, maybe um, uh, not the easier, but the but you'll, you'll have a more entire, endurable time doing what you do. Um, okay. So I, I you know, the, the, the zoning tables, superficially look like a very numeric zoning table as they do in other jurisdictions. Um, but the way that um, the requirements are qualified um, are much more based on, on, on building form than the typical metrics in other municipalities, which typically either um, establish density and scale through dwelling units per acre or floor area ratio. Um, in this case, it's based on number of stories, uh, maximum um, uh, facade lengths, and requirements for how the different edges of a building in a more sensitive way than typical setbacks um, and in a contextual way meet the edges of lots and parcels. So um, just the, the structuring of the logic of even the dimensional tables has a more form-based kind of design focus than a lot of uh, zoning regulations. Um, uh, e equally importantly, um, 
uh, let me see if this is on the right monitor, I guess not. Um, in the zoning itself, um, we include illustrations for some of the zoning requirements that um, make it abundantly clear that um, the rule set is uh, based on a series of design um, expectations. And so again, um, the structuring of how this information uh, down to the, the, the scale of building components like dormers, cross gables, balconies, bay windows, um, uh, uh, mean that we think that the design guidelines should um, understand what's already in the code and then look for places where we want to expand and extend the requirements to a finer grain or more detail or more specificity. So um, that, that's the logic here. You know, even the, the zoning even deals with things like requiring pedestrian pass-throughs to parking areas behind buildings on Main Street if the nearest other pass-through is a certain number of feet away. So there's, there's let's say, design guidelines goodies in the zoning. Um, so the study area, um, um, and, and by the way, um, uh, the zoning proposal um, is color coded. Um, there's a breakdown in the scale of the zoning districts based on the contextual look and feel of the different parts of Hyannis. Um, um, the, uh, uh, the downtown Main Street is the darkest purple. Um, it runs along ba uh, uh, Main Street and then up Barnstable Road in this direction. That sees an expansion of that kind of Main Street look and feel even beyond its current location. Um, there's a district that we call Downtown Village, which uh, happens both on in the neighborhood just to the north of Main Street along North Street, but also on the um, east side of the village where um, there are contextual clues and a kind of building scale that we think were compatible enough that those two districts could in terms of the qualifications be the same. Um, there's then a downtown neighborhood, which are more strictly residential neighborhoods that um, uh, happen in these three areas. Um, um, and then there's the uh, uh, Hyannis Harbor area. Um, those areas that I've called out here, including uh, the transportation center, are all within the purview of uh, where the, the design guidelines will be applied. Um, the other thing that you'll notice on this map is um, the jurisdictional boundary of the commission, which is in red. And you'll see that um, um, except for um, a few minor exceptions um, south of South Street um, here and um, um, in areas where because of you know town ownership, it doesn't maybe make sense um, that the, the, the guidelines also fall completely really within the jurisdiction of the commission. So um, for some of this area, it will be the, the planning board's jurisdiction to use the guidelines. For most of the area, um, the commission and the board will be using the guidelines as the tool um, and the kind of basis for decision making. Um, I don't know, uh, Jim, or, or uh, there's anything else that needs to be added there. I think I would just say the, the exception uh, being that of uh, the areas that you didn't call out, the uh, highway commercial, that while it was part of the rezoning, isn't really going to be taken into consideration here, as that's more of the traditional, um, you know, uh, road, uh, auto oriented um big box type uh development where we're focusing more on the core here right and the same is true with the um uh, uh the hospital district here so that we can have a narrower set of guidelines that that are more consistent in terms of kind of contextual approach um within the document um and just um uh just an interesting map we generated was to understand um, uh, the the age of the structures on the different parcels just to get a snapshot of that just to you know we were curious about um, 
this is in a way a quick understanding of the evolution of the character of the study area. Um, and you can see the darkest par parcels, which are in the dark par uh, purple, which might be hard for some of you to see, are um, historic parcels with structures that are, are from 1920 or older. The, the next tier down, which is a lot of the parcels along Main Street, date from 1921 to 1949. Um, the, the lightest purple structures are from 1950 to 1999, let's say post-war uh, very broadly. And then the white parcels um, are parcels that are a year 2000 or newer, just to understand that within um, our study area and the jurisdictional boundary of the design guidelines, you have this rich mosaic of um, buildings that are from many different eras. And so we need to think about that relative to what we want new development to look like and how we want to frame the rule set for building additions um, and renovations and the things that I know the commission deals with um, on a fairly regular basis. Um, the design guidelines outline. Um, I, I just want to tee this up before I explain why we've structured it this way. Um, we think that um, in general, and this is partly informed by the zoning, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, uh, we're thinking of categorizing the guidelines in terms of building considerations. We're calling them considerations now. Uh, that would range from building form um, a uh, building form guidelines that would break down the scale of the buildings even more than the zoning does. I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Facade treatment, acceptable uh, cladding. Um, we might even decide uh, to uh, frame and limit uh, fenestration types and choices um, and to provide some more clarity on something that's already in the zoning, which are frontage zones for some of these different areas. Um, uh, I also know that um, the commission also currently uses an acceptable range of even color choices for the paint that's used and and we're happy to consider that too um, site plan commit uh, considerations um, uh, really fall into two categories there is in a lot of the existing guidelines that the town uses more generally beyond um, the planning board and the commission that's here a lot of focus on getting parking lots right um, i think that's all it, it, surface parking lots are, are worth revisiting. Um, we also, by the way, think in terms of building considerations that we need to do some work on how parking is handled, if it's handled, you know, as, uh, in part of the ground floor of um, like a parking plant as part of a development proposal too. So that the parking partly will be handled in building considerations when it's within the body of the building. And then of course, at the site scale. Um, and then uh, site and landscape design guidelines, we're all for that. We think that part of the character of Hyannis can be built on a little bit more consistency about fence types, planting regimes along the back of sidewalk, um, different kinds of, kinds of hedges, um, a little bit more control over that we think can create a slightly more consistent kind of walkable urban environment. So we think the, the landscape should be part of this too, that we can in a way build out a little bit more consistency to create a little bit more coherence for the village. Um, uh, this is um, how we've started to think about the relationship between design guidelines and, and the categories of things that are in the zoning. Uh, I'm gonna go over three diagrams like this that take those categories I just showed you and create a kind of a relationship map. Um, everything on the left that's listed um, are design standards that are in the zoning itself. Maximum building length, number of stories, um, requirements about the roof pitch. There's a ground floor fenestration uh, requirement as a percentage, especially along Main Street. There's frontage types, you know, how you actually handle the front setback for, for those different um, zoning districts I showed you. And then there are specific dimensional standards, ranges of ways that you can add building components balconies, bays, dormers, gables, et cetera. That gets us again, half of the way there. But um, the idea is that design guidelines will extend those requirements to a level of specificity that give the board and the commission uh, a little bit more um, uh, uh, kind of 
background and reference material to weigh in on development projects specifically. And then we've listed things that aren't covered in the zoning at all that we might want to consider in the guidelines too that the commission already considers. Cladding materials, trim and molding details, color, um, and even thinking about how we want to um, uh, require the internal depth of uh, retail um, along Main Street to make sure that um, we're getting active uses along um, the Main Street. So um, everything in black on the right are extensions of the zoning. Everything we've listed in red isn't in the zoning, but we think are worth consideration in the design guidelines. Does that structure make sense to everybody in the audience? Uh, a way to understand how we're teeing this up. Um, we want to be very methodological about this because um, that way we know even in what order and what relationship to be, de begin to describe what the guidelines are. So that, that's for the building considerations. Um, but the next slide is about the parking design guidelines. Again, everything on the left are things that are already in the zoning. You know, for example, we require one tree for every five parking spaces. That's a good policy. Um, uh, we have requirements for side and front buffers, um, requirements for landscaping. Um, we have requirements for uh, landscape islands. Those are some things, by the way, that are in pre-existing Cape Cod guidelines, either the Cape Cod Commission or, you know, we went, we, we looked at all of the existing design guidelines across the Cape to see what preoccupations and what kinds of things have been covered in past documents. Um, and then the design guidelines might carry forward with more specificity about plant species. Again, um, you know, indigenous hardy plants, not just decorative plants, maybe getting co some consistency, at least in the front yards for um, a more coherent kind of neighborhood street. Um, and then, um, uh, uh, I mentioned, I mentioned before parking podiums. That's what we call the parking that's in buildings. It might belong here or it might want to be in the building section, um, but we don't think the parking should right, come right up to Main Street. If you're going to have parking on the ground floor of a building, you know, at least have some retail spaces that are 30 feet deep and then put the parking on the back side of the building. So we want to get that in the guidelines as well. Um, and then the last category um, are landscape. Uh, guidelines. We have frontage types more generally in the zoning. Um, when you are when you are 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 for the different zones, it, when you your front setback has to be qualified as one of the types. But we don't require a lot of design guidance about how you're meant to design those types. So that can be in the guidelines. Um, uh, I, I know that there are existing documents that um, are very specific about guidelines for the kinds of fences you can do do. And I think that. You know, in a lot of communities, the consistency of the fences at the back of the sidewalk is part of the character of, you know, historical villages anyway. Um, and we might want to drill into a, a little bit more uh, species of trees too to create maybe some more consistency of tree canopy um, in some of the different sub districts that we're talking about. So that that's um, that's what we've done. We've we've extrapolated the zoning. And then looked at your past documents to see what was missing, and we threw everything in the kitchen sink in. Um, so, I, does that resonate with people? Should I keep on going? Um, I can motor ahead. There's only a couple of more slides. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Uh, I I just want to make sure that we're I'm, at least that I'm tracking um, uh, what what was just presented, and that is the zoning. Um, uh, on the left actually is stipulated right now. It, it's on the books. The design guidelines, which uh, help me, uh, uh, these design guidelines are essentially, um, will they will they um, be used by both, both entities or are the design guidelines um, to be used by the commission to evaluate things? And are those um, those guidelines that have been listed in black, are those on the books now? It, it seems like there's more uh, uh, prescription and um, as opposed to um, in, in contrast to the zoning. Zoning, zoning um, items are actually uh, in statute, whereas the, the design guidelines 
for example, uh, the last one, last one we looked at, more specificity on layout means, I guess, that whatever it is that's actually in existence now um, needs more specificity. So my question is, what exactly is on the books for design guidelines at, at present? Good question. I, I mean, I can, uh, do you want me to go first? It, it's maybe a question for James, but nothing exists yet on the right. Our, we've been we've been scoped with, in collaboration with the board and the commission to, to write and create diagrams for all the things on the right. And you might say, that's too many things, it's too specific. Your list is too extensive, that freaks me out. Or you might say, yes, we'd like to see a, a draft of what that might look like. And, and you know, as part of this process, we would discuss um, the merits of including those things or not. So it, let's say that everything on the right is a, um, are, are optional things that we might collectively want to put in the guidelines. Can I ask, is it on, is it Cheryl? Uh, the, I thought the things on the, the black were already there and the red is things that there, but there, some of the things in the black are on the right. Does that mean no. they're not? The everything, everything on the left only is, is statute. Okay. Nothing is written on the, on, is been decided on the right. The things that are in black are things that extend directly from the zoning logically the things that are in red are things that aren't covered in the zoning at all so what we would be doing is at formulating a uh a greater uh example of things that were not included for greater guidelines so they're trying to get rid of the gray areas is that about right yeah first let me let me maybe would it help if i gave an example sure. um and, and I, i'll do this with some slides in a minute but Right now, the only thing that controls the massing of a development and the zoning is maximum facade length. Um, and I think it's 100 feet for some districts and 120 for others. I can't quite remember, so don't quote me, um, even though I helped write the zoning. We think that the design guidelines should require a further breakdown in the scale of buildings. Um, so the design guidelines might say, yes, the overall length of a building can be 120 feet, but you have to change the facade and the facade plane every 60 feet. Um, and we would do a diagram in the design guidelines to show the acceptable ways that you could do that. Or, um, you know, we have a regulation about in the zoning about roof pitch that's fairly permissive, we might decide in the design guidelines, we want to drill into more specificity or say every X number of feet, you have to change um, the the roof direction so the building looks smaller. So it, it I, I think you put it well, Cheryl, it extends, it takes as the law what's in the zoning and it says the design guidelines, you actually, actually have to say you have to also do this. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you for clarifying. And, um, I, I have a, uh, I have a some energy here about the tremendous amount of pre-existing non-conforming buildings that make up Main Street, and short of having these design guidelines only if you're going to completely remove an existing building and create a new one. Uh, we have a real struggle when we deal with downtown structures that for the most part are occupied and how we're ever going to be able to enforce design guidelines into the pre-existing non-conforming structures that uh, are very limited as to landscaping. Some of them have no frontage setbacks at all and uh the burden that this might uh set onto designers and architects that are trying to stay within the design guidelines but they've got a building that doesn't fit anywhere here how does that how does that architect and how do we 
make sure that we're uh, able to help them get what they want and not require that they go into some extraordinary effort to try and uh, appease the guideline. Yeah, I mean, I just, just very generally, as a matter of principle, you know, across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, typically existing properties do not have to conform to new zoning and especially new design guidelines unless investments are making that made in that property at some threshold that each town, each municipality decides, um, mm -hmm. or you would never get new zoning passed. So um, I would say that it's especially true for design guidelines, except the role the commission plays in reviewing um, the rehabilitation and renovation of existing structures. And we have some thoughts about that at the end of the presentation. So the, neither the zoning nor the design guidelines in general are, are meant to set existing property owners into some kind of panic that there's new obligations that they have. But I, I, I'm, you know, it's a question for Elizabeth and Jim about, um, uh, you know, what the final decisions were about the threshold for compliance and non-conforming uses for the zoning. I think that would apply to the design standards too. I think I have to clarify that uh, Commissioner Kay is not only the vice chair for the HHDC, but he also holds the seat for that is reserved for uh, AIA as an AIA architect. We've, so, we've made him very valuable. <laughs> And, and uh, if I could just add uh, to, to what Tim was saying, yes, so the pre-existing non-conforming structures, there are thresholds in which one would have to adhere or not adhere to the new uh, guidelines or, or ordinance. Uh, however, the, the ordinance is really set up to kind of incentivize uh, investment. Uh, so we, we've run into quite a bit of, you know, maybe North Street with underdeveloped lots or on Main Street that could use uh, dramatic infill opportunities, but uh, the zoning just didn't allow it. And so this now allows for that opportunity to to create investment. Uh, so it's not simply just you know sticking a few windows in a in a, on a wall that never had windows before. Now they're adding a whole new addition to it, uh, or potentially going up one one story uh, to to provide for more enhance uh, a larger project for downtown Hyannis. Did my long answer address your question? <laughs> well, we could certainly consider, uh, for example, a pre-existing non-conforming Main Street building that wants to do more massing and more stories. We could then look at these design guidelines to make sure that the moldings and trims and fascias and all of those presentations could be more uh, artistically controlled to try and help move Main Street to a more pro a, a more proper perspective. And, and for that, I think that there's a lot of room that we could use these guidelines in. But if our building owners are only concerned about signage and all of that, and they're stuck with the planners that they have, uh, it, it, it may be, far-fetched to think that we could make a huge impact immediately with this. This is going to be a slow process to kind of draw all of our design uh, experts into understanding where we want to take this city and what we want it to, or town, and what, it, what we want it to look like. Other questions? Should I... I... Keep well, moving um, here. Oh, yeah. Tim, I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, speaking to what Ray brought up, um, Ray, the um, downtown Hyannis design and infrastructure plan is something that we reference a lot um, because, especially for really any development in this area, regulatory agreements, especially, um, it's something that we can use to hold the applicant to um, stricter uh, standards. I remember with the, um, you know, with the Walgreens 
you know, I kind of leaned a bit on the, you know, the maritime and historic character of the area to get a few design changes that, um, you know, I think the board really, really liked and really enhanced the property. So we're now looking to um, improve those, which will help us even more. And Tim, my question for you would be, and actually this is probably for Jim, Jim would, whatever comes out of this process then replace the existing downtown highness design and infrastructure plan with a new plan that would be part of section 240 well i, th I think we'll have to see how the pro process uh matures uh, i think the intent is to create one unified document where we have the essentially within this document would be the design and infrastructure plan and the design guidelines for the commission and there's very likely a lot of overlapping characteristics that may uh, come come into play, uh, but that's that's part of the working group is really shaping what that document that that uh, final document will look like. And I think I think I think Stephen the 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 document that you use now everything that you like about it we'll put in here. How does that sound? <laughs> no, I, of course I, I you know yeah. I, I love everything I've heard so far. This is very exciting. You know that. That document was, um, you know, enacted September 2005 and revised April 2006. It's 17 years old, so um, this is great. You know, I think this is the right thing to be doing. The other thing that we're planning on doing in regards to that, yes. Yeah, so I think this is the chance for the representatives from the commission and the board that are in our working group to say, you got, you got to put this in here. It's really worked well for us. Like this isn't our current guidelines but it's a pain in the neck or it doesn't make any sense i mean I, I really want to like you know get very pragmatic about what's in here and what what's most effective for for, for both bodies um we also plan by the way um in our document to reference back to the relevant zoning sections so if we're so that because people show up and play dumb is like yeah. you know and oh by the way in the in the in the zoning ordinance this is how it addresses you know more generally things that you need to know while you're focused on this issue so we're, we're hoping to create a kind of cross-referencing system that just makes understanding the expectations super clear okay I so um I that it was more to make it more cohesive so that we're not you know conflicting with one another we're working as a team and have the same guidelines that we're all on the same page uh i i like uh steve think so far what i've heard is sounds great to me uh and uh you know so that there's not well we have these guidelines you have those guidelines i, I think it makes a lot of sense to have uh e to work together on it you know, one other thing before we leave this page, because I think it's a, it's an important general question to discuss. Uh, you know, after talking to the planning staff and thinking about it internally, I'm favoring having a lot of and fairly tight guidelines. Um, as long as we're all on the same page, because I think you know, there's an opportunity with, you know, development on vacant lots and the redevelopment of, you know, underdeveloped lots or lots that have more auto dominant uses on them to with some consistent standards, like extend the village character, you know, beyond the place where the village character already exists. And so, um, and I think as long as the architects on the board and the real estate people and the builders on the board think that we're not straining straying too far and that we're we're also being conscious about the costs of choice i you know i like the way jack you put it which is let's say the trade on the the message to the market is you can build more but stuff's got to be better you know what i mean but that's it's it's a it's a density for quality um uh, uh is is generally the strategy here if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think the manual, this is Tom, I'm on the uh, commission. Um, I think the manual that we have right now is just uh, too wide, you know, too wide, where it really does have to be narrowed down. And I think it would make it easier. And I think the, 
you know, the town would look more cohesive also. So I'm all for that. I, yeah, I, I, I was going to say the same thing because uh, I'm in favor of tight standards, tighter standards, because if they're not tighter, it's open for interpretation. And uh, we've seen that a lot of times where an applicant might think that they're hitting the standard and uh, board members may not agree, so. I agree. Well, let's come back to that. That's the big question tonight beyond getting four of you to volunteer. So we can come back to that because I think that's ultimately um, the kind of direction that we need. Um, so I, I also, you know, the, the, these are color coded at the top to the map to the different districts, but um, uh, there is quite a bit of variety within the study area, even though it's all Hyannis from the street facing zero lot line commercial buildings along at least continuously on the north side of Main Street um, to those commercial buildings that have breaks in them um, to um, larger residences that have been turned into commercial businesses, newer buildings that want to look like old residences that were turned into, you know, commercial businesses, but they're actually new buildings to the, the kind of diverse residential fabric. Um, to the stuff that happens closer to the waterfront. And I, we picked these because these seemed especially Hyannis-y to us. And I, I think that um, the thinking that we do about how we get even the kind of character of new development to begin to fill in and extend some of this is very important. A lot of that even comes down to um, uh, the different cladding choices or even window types, uh, you know, I, you know, we can, we, we can, as we get into the process, we can talk about all of that. Um, so uh, there's some good stuff out there already that points in certain directions. Um, uh, in addition to your design and infrastructure plan, which talks about breaking down roofscapes and massing that's an illustration on the right. Um, the Cape Cod Commission also has some pretty good stuff that, that we've looked at. Um, they have a similar set of intentions in their guidelines that they're just qualified differently in terms of how the dimensions are called out than your document. Um, theirs are called out in plan, yours in terms of where the roofs work. Um, we've worked on a couple of form base um, codes for other municipalities in Massachusetts that require the breaking down of mass into primary and secondary masses. This is definitely something we want to tackle with some more with, with more specificity. I'm going from okay. The zoning does this first. We want to break down the, the the massing a little bit more than the zoning does. This would be a kind of a first order set of rules, which is building form and roof form breaking down. Um, uh, the, the next scale down would be how we would um, provide more detail about uh, frontage zones, which is not just the landscape of the front, but the first floor of buildings. You know, if it's com a commercial buildings, this is a very nice diagram um, that just shows the good parts of a shop front. Can we turn this into something that's got a little bit more teeth and more dimensional standards, but still allow some expressive you know, variety so that the shop fronts aren't so matchy matchy when they're going down Main Street. Um, uh, you know, how do we want to tackle uh, signs here, which are the bane of all of our existence? Do we, you know, that, that often has to just be discretionary at the end of the day, because there's no way every case is unique and um, I tried. Um, so that that's the next tier down, which is, um, kind of rules about fenestration window types. Um, because of uh, energy efficiency now, it's very hard to have lots of little muttons unless they're fake and snapped in. Like, do we bite the bullet and say two over two sash windows where you can still have, you know, true divided lights, you know? It, it, you know, do we think about window types because the kind of cheaper snap and muttons kind of defeat the purpose. I want to I want to get into that level of detail, which is also a quality issue. Do we want to forbid vinyl windows, but allow the other better composites? Like how far do you want to go? Uh, 
it's up to us. Um, uh, we can dream a little. Um, and then, you know, I think, you know, that's your color chart. It cracks us up that it's the California paint company, but that's a whole other issue. Um, uh, you know, I think it, it, you know, we're open to, um, uh, color ranges. Do we want to have slightly different color ranges that are contextual for the sub districts is color that is color a pain in the neck for you? We don't know. So, um, uh, we're happy to go as far as you want to go, I guess, is what we're saying. So um, that just takes you from building massing to the look and feel that's driven by shop fronts and fenestration to, to cladding and color um, and trim, which is somewhere in between. Um, and then, and then um, uh, we, we know we have to have guidelines for renovations and additions. Um, and I think some of that can leverage off the work we do for new development. Um, but this might require a little bit more storytelling uh, from representatives from the commission about, you know, what's been driving you crazy and how can we help? So um, that I think that's kind of what we have for you this evening. I think, oh yeah, next steps. <laughs> so I, um, do we uh, any more comments about the content of what we're up to? Because then I'll have um, Andrea talk about our uh, kind of scope of work and our schedule and how we're going to do this all. I have one question that uh, uh, my biggest disappointment with Hyannis Main Street is commercial storefronts. Uh, you really hit a real sore spot with me. Uh, with this effort, also have a benefit in offering an option to existing uh, buildings that have commercial storefronts, uh, create a program where they could go and redo their storefront to be more classic for the, and help get this ball rolling to, to move people into this thinking. Is, are there grant options? Are there anything at all that we can do to help that? I know some of the uh, other larger cities are doing things with storefronts now that are pretty amazing. They're, they're energy efficient, but they don't look anything at all like commercial uh, storefronts. So uh, I, I think that's a great idea. To yeah. try and at least pull the front off of buildings that have been, if you'll pardon the term, bastardized by storefronts, and and take that linear, cold, uh, it's in the wrong building lookout, to to try and bring this into a more classic style. Yeah, Jack, I think that's a, that's a great uh, perspective in terms of uh, establishing programs to get to a, 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 an application that that is really uh, like a model for the, these design guidelines. We do have yeah. one small program right now uh, for facade improvements in collaboration with the uh, downtown, uh, the bid. Um, but yeah, that's something we can certainly uh, prioritize and, and look at programs and grants uh, that might be able to to incentivize, uh, you know, meeting the, the top bar of these design guidelines when we have them in place. I, think I, I, I agree with that also. I loved everything that I've uh, heard here tonight, and uh, but it's going to take decades to, to get it to look good, you know, where if we could do have an incentive for the existing storefronts, which is another pet peeve of mine, that would be fantastic. Same yes. with landscaping, same with landscaping also. You know, you can have new buildings and you're going to put in this nice landscaping and the rest of the town really doesn't have it. It has to start somewhere. I just said, <laughs> I agree. It does have to start somewhere. I, I like everything I've heard so far as well. Let me um, just, I'll give you the overall contours of our process and then Andrea can walk you through the calendar in more detail. So um, your encouragement was fantastic so far. So we can move ahead with some confidence. That's great. Um, we um, uh, 
what we need to do now is a little bit of field work. Um, we're coming to Hyannis and we're going to kind of walk around and take some photographs. Although we've, we, we have a lot of that work done with previous planning contracts with the town. So we know Hyannis very well. Um, we want to begin to think through the rule sets um, for the different components I talked about. We want to come up with a clever way to qualify how the mass should be broken down. And we'll do that by actually drawing diagrams. We want to come up with a very smart way to qualify the minimum standards for a storefront. We want to do a little bit more research about um, what windows we should require that are also energy efficient and are going to be meeting ever increasing energy codes that still create the character that we're after. Um, we want to um, make sure that our design standards are reflective of current building practices. For example, Hardy, which makes cementitious cladding materials that are almost every building now, makes really good shingle stuff that, you know, most people wouldn't know isn't real cedar sh shakes. So we want to we want to create guidelines that um, let's say are builder and developer friendly too, um, to also encourage the market to build buildings we like and do the landscaping we like. So we're, we're, we're going to we're going to have that period of work. Um, and while we're doing that, we're going to um, be having a series of touch points with this uh, smaller working group. Um, um, and then we'll draft the guidelines and run it by you all and, um, you love it. And then the town will approve it <laughs> or the commission and the board will, will endorse it or whatever the, I don't know, procedurally what the right, right steps are. Um, so, um, uh, Andre, do you want to just kind of talk on a month by month basis when these things are happening? Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Um, so. Right now, um, as Tim was saying, we're in the project initiation. Uh, we're in the project uh, introduction of project meeting where we're meeting uh, with all of you to introduce the objective of the project and put together, as we've said, the working groups. Uh, the next phase of the project will be the content development uh, where we will work closely with the working group um, and it'll last approximately three months. Um, during that phase, we will be creating those analytical maps. Um, we will have our first uh, site visit uh, to Hyannis. Uh, we're planning tentatively for April 10th, and we want to pair that first site visit with the first meeting with the working group, which will be an in-person meeting. Um, so um, keep an eye out for that, whoever signs up for the working group. Um, then we will have a second uh, meeting uh, with the working group, which will be virtual. So the filled in boxes are um, meetings that are in person and the boxes that are void are meetings that are virtual. Um, and that second meeting will be to review uh, the approach for the guidelines after we've um, looked at your initial feedback uh, in that first meeting. Uh, and then we'll have some time to uh, create a, a draft of the full guidelines document. Um, and that'll be the end of that second phase. The third phase uh, will um, consist on um, reviewing and ed editing the document, and that will take place in June. Uh, at the beginning of that phase, um, we will have uh, review meetings with the commission and with the board. Um, they will be uh, in person. Um, and then uh, we will develop an outreach strategy to share this draft, excuse me, <clears throat> and uh, we will review the comments we receive with the working group, and that will be a, a virtual meeting. Uh, we will incorporate those comments, and then we will give a final presentation again uh, to you both, the commission and the board, uh, towards the end of June. Um, and uh, happy to answer any questions that, that you might have about the general timeline. For instance, on April 10th, what do you have a time of day for that? Or is it just April 10th? 
We will be, uh, the UTL team will be in Hyannis most of the day. As Tim was saying, we will be doing our survey, taking some photos, uh, the time of day for the meeting. Um, I don't, uh, I'll leave it to Jim to, to answer. I don't know if you have in mind sometime. Yeah, I think the thought is once we get uh, the volunteers, I'll send out an email to the volunteers and, and co coordinate with UTL to get a time that works for everyone, hopefully. So that really concludes our presentation, um, uh, what we wanted to cover this evening. I think one of the things we need to do is to try to put together this this subgroup, so to speak. The a minimum, I think it's a minimum of two from each entity. Is that correct? Yes, that, or two from each group would be um, appropriate, I think. We, we don't want to uh, veer too close to a quorum. Uh, so the, the request is to, if you like, we don't have to uh, decide this evening if, if, uh, if you would like to, you know, think about it and, and send me an email, I'm, I'm happy to coordinate that if that works better for the chairs, it's, uh, it's up to you guys. I, owe some, I mean, I'll come forward and say I'd, I, I would be interested in serving on that, but I'm, I know we have a number of fantastic people on the HHDC. Um, who who would be very uh, good on it, but are all great. So, but uh, and maybe the people already have an idea if they want to or not. I think we don't want the group to be too big because it, it'll include the planning uh, department too. I mean, we want it below Robert's rules of order so we can roll up our sleeves and, and discuss things. So, um, and and we'll be, touching base with the full board and the commission too. So, but we're also a lot of fun to work with. So. <laughs> Jim is right. Yes, we have to talk about forum. And for planning, um, we have a meeting coming up this Monday. Uh, I would propose that, um, you know, potentially Karen could follow up this meeting with an email to the full board, letting them know how things went and what we're looking for. And, um, I would assume that two volunteers would come forward um, on uh, on Monday, and we could we could get it going. And for myself, I would say I'd look to two other members to join. And if we didn't find those two members, I would happily join in. And um, from the background, I'll obviously be uh, offering my input as well because I'm definitely excited about this. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. No question. Yeah. Yeah, I, cer I certainly also would like to uh, join in if there's room. I th I think you'd be ideal, Jack, with your architecture background. I volunteer because I'm kind of the oldest, not necessarily in age, I don't think, but I'm the oldest having served the longest. I'm more familiar with the documents as they exist, um, which might be helpful to have familiar with the old to help change it to the new. And I know what's been going but been the hurdles that we've had to get over and where there's been stumbling blocks. I think Jack. You know, I, I'm interested too, but I, I, I defer to Jack because of his architectural background and which I don't have, but uh, I, if you need a third wheel, uh, <laughs> I'd be more than willing. Yeah. You know. I don't think we have, we have quorum issues with three. Do we Jim? No, no, three would, if, if, if all three want to, to join, I think that's, that's fantastic. I think we could do that with the three of you and then get uh, two from the planning board on Monday night. I think that's, that's perfectly uh, fine and, and probably preferred. I think that's a good group there. Yeah. And you don't have to wait what, two weeks for our next meeting. So uh, I think you've got, if none of the other commissioners have any objections on the HHDC, I think we, we have, have the HHDC volunteer so we, we're not holding things up. I think that's great. And if that's the case, you might as well uh, make, make a motion on that. Is, is that right, Jim? Yeah, I, I think, uh, sorry, Matt, I think Matt's trying to uh, chime in. Maybe the HHDC should consider someone who's going to be working for the next 30 to 40 years and not 10 ish. So maybe we should discuss that in our meeting. <clears throat> 
you want to wait till the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, it is it is a delay, but if you if you particularly want to. It's Wednesday, right? Yeah, uh, when is our next meeting, Karen? Because you just had one last week. I think uh, we have- April 5th, April the 5th. Oh, that's not too long. Um, that would be fine. I, I would just ask that uh, consider, um, if you are interested, uh, consider that there will be hopefully a working group meeting on uh, the 10th. Uh, so try and leave a, a space open for, for that if you're interested in joining. We can do it that way if the uh, chair would like. Great. Uh, that sounds good. Meanwhile, I think you made a motion. Did you not, Steve? Or was you? No, no, no. I, I, I was just saying if it was. If it was decided and all, you know, no members objected, you could make a motion, but it sounds like both the sounds commission like and the board will um, discuss this at their next meetings. Okay, that's right. Okay. Sounds good to Perfect. be open to the agenda. Great. Um, I think, um, Jim, I think we're kind of ready to wrap here. Is that right? Anything else to add? Yeah, no, I think that's it for tonight. I think a good introduction to the project. It uh, sounds like a lot of uh, interest and excitement. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's it for now. I know there's a, a, a number of folks that need to get off uh, fairly shortly here. <clears throat> so we would just need a, a motion to adjourn from each party is all and a roll call of that. And can I ask you very quickly, but because of uh, quorum things, uh, we have more than a quorum on the HHDC, so we don't have a problem. Are we voting together or are we voting separately? And does the planning have a quorum? I don't believe we have a quorum, but that's quite all right. We'll just uh, adjourn separately. That would be great. All right. Cheryl, you go ahead. Thank you. Uh, would one of the commissioners like to make a motion that we adjourn from the meeting? I make a motion that we adjourn from the meeting. Okay, second. Second. I'll second that. Okay. So uh, I will ask uh, Commissioner uh, Doherty. Aye. Uh, Commissioner, who else have we got here? I'm used to having them in front of me. Uh, Commissioner Clark. Aye. Commissioner Cronin. Uh, she might have had to have left. Uh, Commissioner Kay. Aye. Uh, I also say I have I left anyone out? Jennifer Needham. Okay, I'm so sorry, Jennifer. I. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Hinkley Needham. Yes, I. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Job well done. We are <laughs> therefore adjourned from the HHDC. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for Thank you, Cheryl. And, and for planning board, I move to adjourn tonight's meeting. And uh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ray. Ray. All those in favor? Ray? Aye. And Steve Robichaud votes aye. Planning board meeting this evening is adjourned. Thank you all so much. This was great. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.